Hi there. You are listening to the Perio Patient Podcast, a podcast for my patients and anyone else who cares to listen. My name is Dr. Ben Young, and I am a practicing periodontist in San Antonio, Texas. Welcome if this is your first time. What I talk about here has to do with periodontal disease, which can be very broad or narrow in scope. In many ways, this is an excuse just to say hi and to put the thought into your mind that is easy to forget due to the many more urgent distractions of life, that your health is important and that your best way to manage it is to do the little necessary things every day. Health has a lot to do with Routine, and routines, when established, become healthy habit patterns. If someone is out of shape or wants to improve general health, is the best idea to go out and run a marathon? The idea being that it would be a quick way to make up for lost exercise time? Of course not. Probably kill me. It isn't how the body operates. Instead, it's by incremental changes that health improves. And what often hinders improvement when the level or intensity is low is that it messes with our thinking. It's easy to think I'm not doing anything useful when I just do a little bit at a time. For this reason, we often seek feedback loops that then are used as indicators that we have done enough today. The problem is when it comes to brushing and flossing, that intensity of effort can cause recession of gums and even loss of tooth structure, which is rubbed away by excessive use of toothpaste on the toothbrush. And advertisers don't help when they show the amount of toothpaste they hope you use to be greater in length than the bristles of the brush. This amount results in foaming at the mouth. People who brush with this amount of toothpaste have to stand over a sink because if they don't, they will have toothpaste foam dropping on their shoes or on the bathroom floor. Also, when people use this much toothpaste, they also seem to scrub at the same intensity as they would polishing their shoes. So feedback loops of tingling mouth that tell you you're done brushing is the same as trying to swat a fly using a bazooka. So here are a few other problems that come with intensity of using a toothbrush. First, if they have thin gums, These gums can be injured and recede and then not grow back because they can't. You're irritating the tissues every time they attempt to grow back to where they were. You're brushing them back. This exposes root dentin. and This makes the teeth look longer and it also adds to sensitivity. Also, the toothpaste can abrade away the enamel, which is an insulating layer over the dentin that supports it and sits between that enamel and the pulp containing a nerve that really doesn't like hot and cold. So over time, with intense brushing, years of it, with lots of toothpastes, the insulation of the enamel goes away and cold ice cream and hot coffee signals are sent more easily to the pulp which always looks for an opportunity to tell you that it exists. Finally, toothpaste is promoted as helping whiten the teeth. And this is nice, but how does it do it? Generally, the answer is it's cleaning off the outer layer of enamel that is dulled, exposing new whiter enamel behind it. It's a chemical erosion. And this works for a while, again, until the dent behind the enamel begins to show through. And you know it's showing through because dentin is yellower than enamel, which means the teeth begin to turn yellower and duller in color. And again, they're more sensitive to the temperatures. So, 
what do you do to have white teeth? Well, the first thing is to avoid too much toothpaste. Use it for flavor. Second, don't get decay, which means control sugar intake and frequently gently clean with floss and soft bristle brush and minimal toothpaste. And then if you don't like the color of your teeth, you need to talk with a dentist. Some people have discoloration of teeth due to uh, tetracycline stain as children, things like that. And those things can be addressed and fixed. Talk with your restorative dentist. And what about water picks? I hear this all the time. They, people want to substitute the water pick for brushing and flossing. My concern with water picks has to do with intensity once again. It is working over the gums by too high a pulse and shooting bacteria down into the pockets. The benefit of water picks is to irrigate away food, especially under bridges or around brackets and braces in orthodontics when people are having their teeth straightened. So it has its place, but it's not a place of substitution. What if there is a place in your mouth where floss doesn't work? Well, then come see me or the other dentist to look at this. It may be that we can come up with a way to make sure that this area does not end up with tooth decay or periodontal disease problems. Remember that plaque control is controlling something you cannot see, not the things you can. And that's why we do it on a daily basis. That's it. That's all I have for you today. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know. You can comment uh, to this podcast or send a message through my website. And you can find my email there, I believe. Finally, thank you to that someone who said they liked my corny jokes at the end of the podcasts. I will have one at the end of this one. And it's just for you. This has been the Perio Patient Podcast, and I am still, as far as I can tell, Ben Young. Thanks for listening. Bye for now. A vulture boards an airplane, carrying two dead raccoons. The stewardess looks at him and says, I'm sorry, sir. Only one carry-on allowed per passenger. Now go floss.